Positive Filter with your host, Philip Wilkerson, a podcast that focuses on friends, family, health, and career with a little self-help around the way. Please join me in this journey for self-improvement, and I hope that what I have to share will make you a better person, thus making the world a better place. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Phil Wilkerson, a.k.a. Positive Filter, a.k.a. Ill Phil, a.k.a. I got Austin Texas on my leg, a.k.a. <laughs> I just got politically involved in the past three years. And <laughs> I'm, joined same, by, same, same. I'm joined, joined by a very special guest. Obviously, everyone is a special guest to me. But I am joined by a young, aspiring, not aspiring, up-and-coming leader there of you young men, uh, brother Quentin Watts. Now, let me just do a little background. Obviously, I know everyone and a mama, but I was <laughs> I was very <laughs> but I was very fortunate to meet this young brother at a was it general convention for the first time? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, um convention. And uh this young brother was doing big things. So I was like, "Man, this dude is really on it for someone that's in college." And he was surprised that I wasn't on it for someone that <laughs> an alumni. I was like, he knew yeah. all this stuff. And then we became, I, I would say we were friends. We are friends, mm-hmm. but like I'm significantly, Definitely. I'm significantly older. So when I'm significantly older than someone, I call my friend. I just say, <laughs> I adopt them and say mentee, so it sounds less creepy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we are friends, uh, just significantly older. But I'm gonna let uh, Quentin introduce himself to the listeners. Okay, thank you, thank you so much for yeah. the introduction. Uh, so my name is Quentin Watts. Uh, AKA the prodigal son, the political savant of uh, just youth activism, I like to say. Um, so I'm a, I'm a student. I go to Christopher Newport University. It's down in Newport News, Virginia. Um, like you said, you know, we're both brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, but I'm a spring. Uh, 2017 in this year. You're, you're fall 2017. Jeez, is that, does that mean you're a pro fight to yes. me? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. So he's older yeah. and alpha. <laughs> yes. My, my one yes. <laughs> older and alpha by one season. But yeah, you're older than me by like you know, 12 <laughs> years. But it's fine. It's fine. So, but you know, I'm really excited to, to be featured on this installment of the podcast. And I'm really excited to just to share it with you guys, you know, you know, just my thoughts on like, you know, a myriad of topics. So I'm, I'm ready to get it going. I'm ready to get it going. So obviously every time I have someone that wants to be on the podcast, uh, we develop topics or I just come organically. But I knew something that popped up in my head with this young brother was that he was on it in regards to knowing what's going on in the world of politics. Like I was more impressed that he is a college person, college brother, that just knew what's going on. I asked him questions. I'm like, who are you rocking with in the election? We text each other. And this dude was like, I'm <laughs> yes. Yang Gang. I was like, what the like what are you Yang, talking about? Yang Gang, man. So All so I knew this episode was talking about getting involved in social justice, getting involved in the political sphere in college while you're young. Yeah. Um I do want to give a little bit of background on that. Yeah, go so ahead. Like yeah. To, do your so background about how you got involved. Yeah, so like I think me and Phil have a similar story in that you know, he got involved, you said, what, three years ago? I'm and, joking, but more involved, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I always voted. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, just like, just like, because like when we think about being involved, right, mm-hmm. a lot of people say like, oh, like I vote, like that's I do my part, like, that's, you that's know, it. hands off after that. Yeah. But really, it's so much bigger than that. It's mm, like, I am are you researching? Are you not just voting, you know, with a D or an R uh-huh. or whatever the case may uh-huh. be? So, um, you know, I was always, you know, I mean, I don't have as rich of a voting history as you just because of my age. I've only <laughs> voted in uh, two or three elections, but yes, yes. I've always voted at the end mm-hmm. of the day. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I was never really involved either. I, I kind of became involved when I joined Alpha about three mm-hmm. years ago. I started, you know, Alpha as a rich history mm-hmm. and even a present history of just activism and social mm-hmm. justice. So yes. um, kind of working through Alpha to do that, I was like, man, like this, this is my my niche like I really like this mm. like this is what I'm good at mm-hmm. um just being in the community and speaking for others that you know perhaps mm-hmm. you know don't don't feel like they have the power to speak for themselves or you know things of that nature so um just joining alpha and finding my niche there was really uh, essential to me and actually you know when I first went to college I wanted to be a physical therapist you know okay there you go um I actually came in uh studying cell and molecular bio 
Um, and and I was doing it because I was like, you know, my mom told me she thought yeah. I'd be good at it. There I go. So I, I just kind of started doing that. But then when I joined Alpha and, and started doing all the stuff, I was just like, man, like I really enjoy this one, mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm good at it. Like I. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I can speak, I can, you I like know, that part. uh, you know, just el- elaborate on the things I'm thinking, you know, use my words to kind of speak truth to power. Um, so, uh, I found just like purpose and all of those things. So, um, that's, that's what kind of got me on this track. Yeah, I like on that. this track. And I, and I also, you know, I know a lot of people tell you not to do this, but I, I go on Facebook all the time arguing with people. Oh, like, you, do, oh <laughs> you do that one. I'm see, one of I those guys. I don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> I'm just like, I see something and I'm like, I have time today. You, you have know? time? <laughs> on the phone? See, and, and, and here's the two things. Okay. Yeah. So I always voted. Um, I mm-hmm. definitely remember my first election uh, when I was 18. I was at Bowie State and I voted. It was the uh, Bush Kerry one. Okay. And like you said, I kind of just voted Kerry because I saw a D and I just yeah. did it. Yeah. I was like, oh man, no research. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just remember Kanye West said, Bush don't care about black people. I was like, yeah. oh, that's good enough. I, right. Whatever. <laughs> and so I was like, damn, that, you know, I, I, if I could go back in a time machine, maybe know a little bit more about policies and stuff, it would have been probably more helpful. Mm-hmm. And I always, afterwards, I always voted in even the small ones. Mm-hmm. So like, even like uh, the uh, elections for county people. I just was like, yo, I, I I didn't know who they were. I didn't I didn't do no research on the the board guy or the, the state level guy. Yeah. I just clicked their name. Yeah. But I've always was active because I just remember just in the in the back of my mind, I knew it was important to do at the bare minimum of political involvement was mm-hmm. voting because I, I, I was a history major and so I did my history about how people died for the right to vote. So I was like, okay, at the bare minimum I'm going to just exercise my right to vote because that was very important for someone back in the day. Mm-hmm. For me to not vote is disrespectful. So mm-hmm. I, I was always like that. So when they were like, I remember they were like, um, uh, to join Alpha, you had to show that you're an active voter and all that. I was like, yeah, I vote all the time. Mm-hmm. Got my voter registration card. But then it was similar to you. When I got involved, I was like, all right, well, I think now I need to start actually reading who I'm voting for. Yeah. Uh, dudes was in my chapter are having real sophisticated conversations mm-hmm. about who, to, and I was like, you know, I want to like at least talk about it, like know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, this is peer pressure, positive peer pressure. I wanted to uh, be able to talk, right? So I would watch the debates mm-hmm. so I could join the conversations. Right. Like, they're talk, they were, they're in my group, we had group meetings, and in the group meetings they were talking about the debates and all that stuff. And I was like, well, for me to join the conversation, Mm-hmm. At least I need to like do some fact checking. Right, right, so right. that's right. when I started actually knowing about candidates and who's still running and mm-hmm. who's still in the race. Um, you know what states matter and policies, mm-hmm. and it, it was just like I think it was positive peer pressure uh, mm-hmm. getting involved. But one thing that you said that really struck me, and I'm gonna go like on my tangent, is that yeah. you said I was good at this. Sorry, what are some skills that you said that you were good at? Um. So. Uh, when I say I'm good at this, it's like, it was more like, with anything that, uh, anything that you're good at, it's, Do you want a pizza? it's pretty much, they're here. Okay. Oh, okay, let me get it, wait, pause it, go, yeah, so, um, for that, it, it was really a passion thing for me, it was that I found a place where I felt, uh, the energy that I was exercising was not only valued, mm-hmm. but it was uh, making a positive impact. And I think um, when I'm when I'm also saying I'm good at it was that you know when I would go up in front of people and publicly speak or try mm-hmm. to articulate my ideas, mm-hmm. I found that it was easy for me to connect with people. It was easy for me to have a civil conversation. Mm-hmm. And I think if you look at our political discourse today. Um, you'll see how scarce that skill really is. Like you see on TV people yelling at each other or just like getting angry or just dismissing each other's views or or perspectives. And I found that I really could um, challenge the people I'm talking to in a way that was respectful and in a way that truly made them evaluate like, hey, you know, does he have a point? Like, you know, what is he actually talking about instead of just talking past each other with just talking points that each side uses. Um, so I, I found that I was exhibiting things that I didn't see most people that were even seasoned in the field doing, like whether it be on TV or watching them through through some other medium. Um, 
so I, I, I just found I had a talent for civil discourse and analyzing information and, and extrapolating um, kind of philosophies into concrete ideas. Um, so, um, you know, like when I'm studying a lot of this stuff, I'll think about it. I'm like, oh, like I, there's just constantly things going through my head and different avenues of like, wow, I really understand that. Or I understand this point of view, even though I don't fully agree with it, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I think my my ability to kind of look at things from so many different perspectives, even if I don't necessarily agree, allows me to understand people and truly have a conversation where we reach a conclusion, and it's not like for entertainment. You know I got what I'm you. Now, one of the things I also noticed while well, I'm hearing, did you switch your major because you were coming in with that health focus? Did you switch to something more politically involved? Um, yeah, so I switched to environmental bio as my field of study. Um, I wanted to switch to more poli sci, but I would have to stay like six years. <laughs> so you at the point where I, you know, was th was thinking about all of these things. And, uh, yeah, like, uh, the, the environmental bio is not necessarily political science, but it, it you know, obviously climate change and well, also, of that it, nature. Well, yeah. you're also, if, if it's not related to your degree, you're getting the experience outside of your degree. Through. Right, exactly. So I always tell people, if you have a passion for something, if you can't get it within your degree, what other ways can you do it? And you're doing it other ways, like right. within your organization at Alpha. Yeah, yeah. So if you can't switch your major, you still can get that. Right. When I look on paper and say, hey, I got this degree in the environment stuff, but look at the boom, 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 boom. I did all these voter, voter things, and mm -hmm. you're showing you're like future employers politically if you want to get in politics yeah. that you did the skills related to politics outside oh. of your major. Yeah, like 100%. Like I've had, I've had internships uh, on mm -hmm. campaigns before. I've organized. Mm -hmm. um, I've led campaigns. I've, I've been a servant leader. So I definitely got that experience on my resume. Uh, at this point, I, I think, you know, just like a lot of uh, people my age, like millennials, Gen Z, mm -hmm. a lot of times that college degree is like, oh, like I have this and I've demonstrated that I've like gone mm -hmm. to school and I've obtained a higher education. But a lot of times you're not like necessarily working in the field no. exactly where you well, like gained it. You know I'm what I'm not. Saying? Shoot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a exactly. history major. Now, yeah. one of the things I'm thinking about, did you grow up in a political home? Like when I say political home, like mm -hmm. um, for instance, um, I had John, brother John Chapman on my episode, and yeah. he told me his mom was doing big things, and she would actually take him to hearings and stuff. Yeah. So it's like, as a kid, you know, you just organically see it. Uh, for me, uh, politics wasn't so talked about in my home, so that's why I kind of just didn't really know it and really mm. understand it as much. Uh, but my wife, she was definitely, her parents were very politically involved, and they just brought that to the table, to the conversation at the table. Did you have that kind of thing growing up, too? Like, did y'all talk about who y'all voting for and why y'all voting and what y'all sh should care about? Did y'all have this conversation at the dinner table with your parents? No, not, so not at all, actually. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. my, so my parents, uh, some, with my mom, I, I mean, she, she would, like, vote and stuff mm -hmm. but yep. she never we never really like talked about it mm -hmm. like it was more it was more like i would see like oh stuff with hillary clinton or mm -hmm. like obama or, or another mm -hmm. politician around the house because she would help on campaigns but she never really like talked about it mm. and then my dad um it was more we would have conversations but it wouldn't be around politics politics it was more around like life and sometimes that intersected with it but like the very, policies kind of thing yeah but very vaguely like, um like so, police brutality don't yeah, talk to cops right and right then yeah. like uh but we didn't talk about the policies and yeah right body cams and stuff yeah like, exactly yeah. or like just like oh you know the economy like, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, like yeah. just stuff like that but yeah. like it was never like with a political spin it was more gotcha. like a just like a save your money kids yeah like a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like a more of a practical yeah. discussion so yeah no like not at all i think our experience is similar in that aspect as well like i never yeah, yeah my parents were never like in into it really why do you, you think know? that i mean like and i'm thinking about this too like why mm -hmm. do you think that's a hard topic to have at the dinner table with young people and their kids uh or i mean uh parents and their young kids and young people like mm -hmm. for instance you know we we discussed earlier like money Certain families are just so open about it. Like, I was so caught off guard of families that they know what their parents make as opposed to, like, I, we never talked about bills. Like, if my dad said he got it, he got it. I don't know how much he makes. Like, yeah. I, don't know his, I don't know his money situation. My wife knows her parents' money situation. They know about retirement and saving. Yeah. Um, these are 
conversation that come at the dinner table and sex, you know, like, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you figure it out, you know, you know, sex ed will teach you at school, <laughs> like, yeah, you know, like, yeah. you know, <laughs> so, like, so, I, I, what, and I, I don't know, I don't know if there's people of color, because I can't really say it's people of color, because yeah. as I said earlier with, with brother John Chapman, his parents were bringing him into the uh, political sphere. Yeah. I got other friends that had parents that were involved in politics and would just bring their kids around. It's like kind of like monkey see, monkey do. Like you see, you see it organically as what you know. Um, but why do you think there is some kind of disconnect about uh, parents talking to their kids or young people and older mm-hmm. people connecting on politics? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. So, um, for me, I think it's a, I think it really speaks to the the struggle that. America is having Mm -hmm. both economically and socially where, you know, when you have a society that is more and more controlled by people at the top and the government Mm -hmm. uh, continues to kind of ignore or respond to the will of the people, you kind of have this like disillusionment, disillusionment with the, with uh, politics in general. And you see that in, in the fact that, you know, over the last several decades, we only have about five and six, or five or six out of ten, you know, every ten of Americans uh, actually voting, let yeah, alone yeah. being involved. Just, what's the number? It's it's like I think I think last election, for example, it was only mm-hmm. six and six out of every ten Americans. That, six out of ten, and then we're going to actually voted. even go further with the six out of ten age age group wise. They're probably older. Yeah, exactly. Like okay. the young people, only nineteen percent of people between the ages of eighteen and twenty nine actually voted um, mm-hmm. in the general election last time. Yes. It was up to 34%, which is very good um, yes. um, as far as an improvement aspect uh, yeah. when it came to the 2018 like midterm elections. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I think that when government doesn't respond to the people and when you couple that with the economic anxiety that we're seeing, you know, more and more of the gains of society is going to the top. We have very uh, exacerbated levels of wealth inequality. Um, I, I think I saw a stat where millennials, um, by the time we're 35, um, are only going to own about 3% of the wealth of this country. And uh, uh, other age groups, such as you know Generation X, they own 9% at oh, the shit. age of 35. Yeah, I got my hope. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then um, I think baby boomers own up to 21%. Okay. So you just see the decrease in the standard of living and, the, you know, so, wages have stagnated since the 1970s. Now, I get a that. Whole bunch of things. So how do you think that comes down to the dinner table and mom mm-hmm. and dad talking to their kids? How do you think that? How yeah. you, and that's big. Like, how do you think that big micro thing that you just talked about, yeah. how do you think that translates to the conversations? Because, yeah. like, honestly, like, this is real. Like, a lot of my friends, even my peers, we are, and I say I'm 34, now we're becoming politically involved. Yeah. Now it's like I feel like I'm playing catch up. Like now I'm I'm I am having conversations because I can see how things are affecting my children and the schools and like and and what I'm learning is not I don't over fixate on the the national stuff. I'm like worrying about the actual county yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like because county stuff affects my kids. Like mm-hmm. what the schools and all that's doing. And then. Even the conversations, like I remember when we were in high school, we were talking mm-hmm. about Jays and Jordans and yeah. <laughs> girls and sports. Yeah. But now I'm like talking to my boys, and we we literally we mix it in with like still ratchet memes and stuff. Yeah. But then me and my best friend Hillard, we actually talking about, yo, did you watch that debate last night? Mm-hmm. And we're having those conversations. Mm-hmm. But I know for him, he did not have those conversations at the dinner table. Mm-hmm. I know for me, I did not have those conversations at the dinner table. Uh, mm-hmm. Young black men, we didn't have these conversations with our parents. And I'm understanding, like, on my wife's side, when mm-hmm. I met her, she already knew about all this stuff. She would say, yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's that level. That's the uh, lieutenant governor. And then she mm-hmm. knew all the people's names. I was like, yeah. I don't know who these people are. Right. I don't remember. <laughs> it was, I felt like kind of, I felt dumb, like, because mm-hmm. I didn't, because, but it wasn't dumb because um, the information not out there. It just wasn't mm-hmm. talked about. Right. So why do you, th- you think that? Well, Again, I, I think it's the the kind of failure failure of our politicians. Like you know, they mm-hmm. say one thing on TV, or they tell you, mm-hmm. you know, hey, we're we're going to actually do something that's going to impact you. Then they get in there, and what do you see? You see the same old, same old, and it's like you don't see anyone that's running that is actually trying to do something that appeals to the people. They're just talking. So then it's like. You kind of get this disillusionment, like, well, no matter what, if I vote, it doesn't matter because they're going to continue to do the same things 
they're not working for me. So, and, and I think particularly um, when we talk about the economic anxiety, it's like when you're looking at them, you're saying like, oh, you know, what are they going to do for me? And when the government continues and continues to let you down, it's like, well, I'm just going to like focus on getting it on my own Mm -hmm. instead of like Mm -hmm. trying to rely on this external entity that has shown me that it doesn't really care about me. And that's why I was, you know, trying to kind of going into all the statistics of like, you know, Mm -hmm. the economic and just the social anxiety, poverty, discrimination, whatever you want to call it. It's just that. When government is not working for the people, then you get the lack of participation and voter apathy because people are like, you mm. know, I'm just going to rely on myself, I'm not going to rely on the institutions that mm. are supposed to help me because they're not. You know what I'm saying? And so, then it comes down to the dinner table. And then, like, yeah, then you have a parent that's like, yo, I'm just going to get it. I don't need to, yeah, talk, like, I'm not, I don't need know. to talk about politics. My kids don't care about this. No, right. Like, no it way. doesn't matter. Like, like I'm just going to focus on, yeah, focus doing on my something job. that serves them yeah. in the short term, which is like, oh, like, you know, them overcoming with their obstacles is in their way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like a parent, parents going to worry about, like, yo, okay, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't care about no politics as long as my kids go to school right. and get their grades and, up. Right. And then, <laughs> like, another, yeah, right. Yeah. And then another thing is, like, we don't have great civic engagement in our schools like i remember i took a civics class but they didn't teach me they taught me like the three branches of government yeah i knew that right you know yeah. the facts yeah, yeah, yeah like you know the three branches of government but you don't know like what like i didn't, I didn't even know there was a lieutenant i didn't even know what a lieutenant governor was <laughs> yeah. like uh Bro. you know i don't even Bro. i didn't even know what the governor does i just <laughs> knew there was a governor like yes, yes, or, or yes. just the various yes. city council positions the yes. board i didn't even know it was a board of supervisors so i got in college you yes. know the board of supervisors the fact that they um had different committees that are working on different projects yeah. throughout yeah. the city mm-hmm. um like you don't know any of those things and they just mm. kind of teach you kind of on a macro level mm. so really it happens with bringing civic engagement to our schools and ingraining yeah. it that it is important that you are involved in the political um yeah. on the yeah. on the political side at yeah. a young age and i think also that something that we should do is lower the age of voting to 16 oh because okay only no listen to me Uh-oh. so only because if you're if you're putting it in the minds and in the in the schools that like, hey, voting is important, but you're not going to let me vote while you're teaching me that. Like, I'm not saying you should do it while you're in middle school, but in high school, for example, when you're 16, you can work. That means you can pay taxes. So I don't have a, I can pay taxes, but I have no say on, uh, yeah, on I mean, that money goes. I, 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 mean, I, was in, I mean, I was in IB, and I took IB government. Yeah. And so in IB government, we talked about all this stuff. Yeah. But at the same time, I, I could tell you from IB government, I didn't know anyone local. Right, right. Like, I was like, they, and there's, and there's such they, an emphasis. And they did a quiz on like they did a quiz, and it said, you know, yeah. who names the presidents and named the, you know, George Washington, Thomas. I, I knew that. Yeah. Name the branches: executive, judicial, legislative. Boom! I'm getting a, I'm getting a grade. I'm getting a. But then they'll say, Yo, Philip, tell me the lieutenant governor of Virginia back in tenth grade. Yeah. I'd have been like, Who is like, what is that? Or right. tell me, uh, tell me a committee you can get involved in. I literally did not know that Fairfax County had committees and different board of supervisors for right, the exactly. Braddock district and this district and all that. I literally did not know any of this stuff until I was an adult. Yeah, and then and then the kind of other thing is like how we put the national election of the president, like, you know, everybody, it, even even though the, the voting rate is still low, like I said, mm-hmm. um, only like about 60, 50, 60% of people actually vote for that. It's even lower. You have rates like 30, sometimes 20% Mm -hmm. voting for local uh, Mm -hmm. elections, uh, Mm -hmm. statewide elections even sometimes too, which ostensibly probably impact you even more. Yeah, schools, Um, roads, all that. And and it's because we have such a macro level focus on what civic engagement means as like, I just know the general system that governs me, but I don't know like the nuances and I don't know about different like, political ideologies i don't really yeah. know what i believe which is yeah. why like you know you kind of get like the gist of it like you know yeah. if i'm a democrat i believe in like uh, you know the government as a as a tool to kind of institute like social programs and stuff like that mm. but then you know and then republicans is kind of like oh i want to scale back the government and mm-hmm. it's like yeah you know or, or people kind of look at it as like Oh, like I see the political theater on TV, and mm-hmm. this is what I agree with, like off the top of my head, the most. And that's like I'm just gonna vote down that line, yeah. And not treat these people as the individuals yeah. that they are. That's true. Know? Now, and 
So bringing it back to your experience, because this is about being politically involved in college. Yeah. When you join Alpha, mm-hmm. man, congrats. You joined the greatest fraternity in the world, honestly. Um, when you started, when did you start saying, yo, this is something I need to take serious? For instance, I told you in the group meetings and conversations, yeah. I want to thank my brothers. They kind of just got me involved. Just How do you just like, yo, how, how did that start invoking for you, like, that political involvement? Um, so it... It first happened when I was just um, like I, when I was like when I was in high school, mm-hmm. I would look up a lot of like political videos only because like I like the kind of intellectual like like kind of battle of minds. I just like mm-hmm. them seeing them go back and forth and mm-hmm. seeing what they could come up with. And um, when I but when I realized it was like important was mm-hmm. when uh, just like being in alpha and being on a PWI mm-hmm. where um, just like we just like seeing how we didn't get the resources that we needed and how it handicapped us in like our ability to perform. And then I kind of was like, wow, like that can be extrapolated to like actual life, mm-hmm. like communities, like they don't get the same resources as others. So then like with anything, if you have more obstacles in front of somebody, that means more people are probably going to fail to reach a, a certain, you know, threshold mm-hmm. of success. So, and, and I saw that with us, it was like, you know, we weren't getting the attention from administration. We didn't get the monetary support. Uh, the, the culture at the school didn't support us. Um, just like a myriad of different things that we constantly had to battle. And when we tried to bring attention to administration, who, who were they looking out for? Not the students. They were looking out for the um, the the faculty. They were looking out for their donors. They were looking out for alumni interests. They weren't looking out for you know the students who are actually the ones that um, you know are supposed to kind of like be the the main goal of improving the universities for a better experience for the students, not the alumni or like you know whatever special interests are donating to the schools. Um, so just kind of that struggle as a student and that struggle as a as a person as part of a marginalized group trying to uh kind of make way on on the campus like that um made me think like wow like you know i wonder how many other people are having this struggle and things that actually truly matter which is like you know are their livelihoods Mm -hmm. and i was like i can use my talents and what i've done to get those resources despite those challenges to actually make a difference in people's lives. And I feel that we most find purpose as human beings in how we can help others and what we can do for I others. That. Yes, and it's not yeah. like, yeah. oh, like, what? Do, how is this going to help me? Like, how is this? It's just like, how can I learn so I can continue to share? Yeah. And yeah. Um, I, like I just that. I just found that, like, you know, that, that was where... That was where I, I had the most passion. Like, I, it would make me, like, you know, actually angry, like, to see people, like, not being listened to, not being heard. Yeah. Because I know when it was something I cared about and I wasn't heard, I know how powerless that made me feel. So I wanted to go out there and give power to others. Yeah, you know? I love that. I love so. I mean, uh, purpose through service. I, I, I definitely agree with that. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I never felt good at a job until uh, I really start focusing on not being the best at a job but just being the best helper and then realize by being the best helper I'm like I did really good I got you know really good at my job just because mm-hmm. I I super focused on helping kids get jobs I was right. like if I help a kid get a job at career services and then, then a lot of kids get jobs because of my my actions mm-hmm. then I'm good at it and it's service focus yeah you're just but putting good energy into the world I tried I tried like no I, I, I tried <laughs> I, I was like man I ain't the smartest but I, I work very hard right and, and you don't have to be the smartest to work hard you just work hard and but you commit to helping others exactly and then normally by a, a byproduct of that good things come mm, now 100%. one of the things I, I did also notice that what you said was that like you noticed that uh, you're getting charged up by bringing voice. And, and 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 bringing voices to things. Mm-hmm. What was one of the uh, early political things that your chapter did that really, when I say the chapter did a political thing, mm-hmm. that you saw the fruits of that, like uh, whether that was a voter registration drive yeah. or something real tangible, like I'm yeah. tangibly committing to 
um, helping someone in the political realm. What yeah. happened that? And, and let me rephrase: yeah. when, when doing that tangible action, did you see like results, like more voters, or like something where he's like, "Man, I put my energy into something, and I saw the results." Yeah. So um, I want to talk about three experiences yeah. I had. So, uh, so the first one was uh, just the mentorship that we do. Like we we were mentor with the. Uh, um, this this uh, small high school near the school is called Bethel High School, oh, sh- and also the uh, Boys and Girls Club. Mm-hmm. And I remember one time uh, the teacher that we volunteered with, she like, you know, she texted me, she gave me her personal number, and and came on campus and just surprised me with this letter, or, or this envelope full of letters of just the students saying. Like, thank you so much for coming. Mm-hmm. Like, you really made me, like, want to go to college or you made me think about wanting mm-hmm. to join a Divine Nine organization. Oh, snap. That was, and, and I mean, it's like, all the boys. They might want to join Alpha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, you oh, got to yeah. steer them the right way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, you know, they, they would just yeah. – that was something I saw, the tangible effect. Yes. And just doing that constantly, you constantly get that mm-hmm. type of feedback. And then another experience I had was just uh, with our signature event. It's called Show the Polls. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that was kind of a voter, not a voter registration thing, but more voter engagement and voter education. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this past year, um, we really did something big with it, which was kind of an initiative I started where we invited um, a bunch of community leaders to have a platform to talk on stage about different initiatives that they were doing in the mm-hmm. community. And... Like, we got so much great feedback from the audience because the, the audience for the event is, like, over a 1,000 people. Yeah. And they would And, 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 and Christian yeah. for Newport is not a very big school, right? No, 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 not at all. It's so uh, a thousand, about 5,000. So 1,000 people at a school like yours is uh, quite significant. Right, about 20% of the population. That's you know pretty good. That's very good. So we, got a, so we got them to come. We were able to provide that platform to the students um, and the community activists. And I remember a lot of them coming up to me and being like, you know, thank you so much, like, we got so many people to sign up for whatever it is that they were doing. Mm-hmm. And just even people that went were like, wow, like, w- thank you for giving a voice. I didn't know those things were happening in the community. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that initiative was even happening. Yeah. It's a lot and, of yeah. and just being able to spread that knowledge and see the fruits of that and like people just being grateful mm-hmm. and just learning. Because a, a lot of the reason stuff doesn't happen is like, it's just, it's a lot of it is based in access. It's not based in, no. are you working hard? It's not based Mm-mm. in like no. anything like that. A lot of it is like, do you know, like even what's happening? I, I was <laughs> about to say, I, that, that's the one I was about to say. Like yeah. a lot of it's just knowing like, like, and I think sometimes like knowing what's in front of you, you like, know? or just knowing what's going on, especially in the political realm. And then not being embarrassed. Like yeah. I remember, I remember feeling a sheer, like, I, f- I remember, like, yo, I'm a professional black male. I'm wearing a suit and tie. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm up there. And I, mm. the fact that I don't know what's going on in my community politically is embarrassing. And then yeah. then you're like, then by me playing catch up uh, uh, in, a, in regards to uh, feeling comfortable, it's like, who can I comfortably ask these questions if I, without feeling like a dummy? Yeah. You feel me? Like, yeah. you know, like, it's like one of those times where it's like, yo, everyone knows this. Like, who can I ask? And that going to judge me. And then. And then I got my homeboy. I got well. One, I got you. Yeah. Which was I got my kids. I got my I young my young people to keep me politically, you know. But then my man Paul Davis was like, "Yo, I asked him. I was just the one that's been on my podcast. I was like, "Yo, who does this? What does this do? What does this committee do?" And then it was like, "That's where I get to ask questions." And I felt like I wish I could have had that at the dinner table earlier. Mm-hmm. I wish I could have been like, "What does this committee do?" Mm-hmm. And text someone as a high school kid because mm-hmm. it's all about. Like literally, it's all out there. There, if you want to know what a committee does, Google it. You'll find it. But I think it's just like a matter of connecting that knowledge to the people. And it's mm-hmm. there's a big disconnect there. Yeah. I know there's a big disconnect. Right. No. Yeah. I I would I would say a hundred percent on that front. I would say I definitely agree with you there. Now, you're politically involved, mm-hmm. and I know on my I'm jumping all over this. Do you yeah. think to be politically involved as a black male, so we're going to stick on you, do yeah. you think it's easy to be politically involved as a black male at a PWI or at HBCU? Mm, that's a very good question. Because you're doing, you're doing alpha at a PWI. Yeah. yeah where, I, where as a Divine mm-hmm. Nine member, uh, it's, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, got into P, I got into HBCUs, mm-hmm. chapters are bigger. 
uh, oh, alpha. Yeah. There's way more alphas at an HBCU because yeah. it's it's a historically black college. Most times I go to PWI, they got like five Bamas on campus. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. like pick it a litter. You know what I'm saying? Like you know. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's, it's so and then so yeah. when you want to do things that are charged up in regards to black people, mm-hmm. it's a little bit more isol not isolating, but you know what I mean. It's like yeah. the voice is smaller, but like you go to Howard and all the HBCUs. Mm-hmm. They ha- they've had all these clubs and organizations and, yeah. and they're and they're marching and they got support they got they probably got support at the campus yeah. and the professors professors are people of color yeah. like do you think it's harder to be politically involved at a, uh, let me as a black male yeah. so not black as a black male do you think it's harder to be politically involved at a HBCU or a PWI? Okay, so. When we think of the, you know, just the concept of something being harder, I, I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of different perspectives to look at that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, disclaimer before I before I talk about this is like I I don't go to HBC, so and I've never have, so I don't, yeah. you know, I can only speculate on that experience. But well, let for me do me, the caveat. Let me caveat though. Yeah. But you are well connected, and you talk to other. Oh yeah, like no, I said no, no, you yeah. are you are the president of your chapter. I'm pretty sure you talk, talk to the presidents of other chapters yeah. that are doing things on their campus. Maybe you can compare their yeah, obstacle, no, 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 their yeah, obstacles yeah. to your co- obstacles. No, yeah, hundred hundred percent on that. Like, I I definitely can compare. It's just like I just wanted to let people know I don't have like you know the mm-hmm. personal experience, mm-hmm. so take what I say with a grain of salt on that mm-hmm. aspect. So, but, um, so on PWIs, uh, the demographics of it are really representative of spaces where social justice has mm-hmm. traditionally been needed. You know as a minority mm-hmm. like that's the whole yes. inception yeah. of social justice yep. is like we needed that to have an equal voice on those campuses and yep. social justice when you think about it right it's um it's justice in terms of you know the distribution of kind of mm-hmm. wealth and opportunities and a lot of in the way that manifests on a college campus is like you know is the money that is coming into the school, is that going towards like a multicultural center? Is mm-hmm. that going to some type of program that is meant to increase kind of uh, the educational outcomes of, you mm-hmm. know, minority students, things like that, and opportunities, you know, whether it be scholarships or internships, mm-hmm. <clears throat> making sure that there's access to that. And, <clears throat> excuse me, but, um, and it's really regardless of kind of individual circumstances or characteristics such as your background. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that being said, um, with PWIs, I feel like it's much easier, uh, um, as far as like to, like you, you, I feel like you experience more, uh, disenfranchisement based on mm-hmm. kind of an identity group as, as being a black male, being a minority. But I think something we share with kind of activism or social justice with HBCUs is that we're part of the marginalized group that is a student. You know what I'm saying? Kind of what I was talking about earlier. And there's that intersection because, like I was saying, a lot of administration is beholden to their, like, donors and alumni. And they try to make sure that they're happy because that's, like, their donator base. But a lot of times they ignore the needs of the student for special interests such as those. So I think there's an intersection there. Mm -hmm. But I think where it kind of splits is, like, on the basis of race. Like, with me, like you saying, you know, being a black male... Is like obviously you know they're the majority over there, so it's not necessarily mm-hmm. they're being um, disenfranchised because of their race. It's more like of other factors, mm-hmm. um, you know. Like for example, if you know the LGBTQ community could be like encountering some difficulties over there. Like I said, students or people with disabilities and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like there's much less veracity as far as unfair treatment on a racial basis that would mm-hmm. really galvanize a movement on mm-hmm. those grounds. So um, I think um, I think it, it's easier on a, on a HBCU as in like, okay, so, you know, as a, as a racial group, we can, uh, we don't really have discrimination on that front. But I think it's harder on a PWI in that, uh, when you're looking at how, you know, how do we get these resources? How do we get these opportunities? A lot of it is based on discrimination, yeah. you know, based on, based on your race and based on your, your unique experience as a human being. I mean, I you think know? like, okay, let's say like you, you don't agree with something politically that, that is a, in opposition to black people at mm-hmm. an HBCU do a rally. 
no one you probably can rally on the campus. Yeah. Let's do a thing where you rally against a, a dis, uh, racial discrimination thing at a PWI. You're probably gonna get a little bit more backlash. Yeah. I, I mean, that's uh, just. No, that, no, no, yeah, that's, that's, I, I think that's just. That's definitely that's true. That's just normal uh, logistics or whatever. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. Like on on a PWI campus, it's like, you know, they they really like, especially. Like, and, and it's like, even your fellow students a lot of times won't even support you because, like, they don't understand where you're coming from because, obviously, it's, like, a racial plight issue. So, mm-hmm. it's, like, a lot of them, you know, a lot of my uh, fellow student body members are, like, oh, like, I, I don't think that's a problem or it doesn't really affect me, so I'm mm-hmm. not really trying to get into it. And then there's also the kind of insidious nature of the apathy that it uh, kind of brings about in, in the black students there because it's, like, kind of what we were talking about with kind of the political political disengagement we're seeing you know outside mm-hmm. of college it's like when you feel like the culture you're in and the space you're in mm-hmm. is not serving you mm-hmm. you kind of take a step back and i'm like well i can't change anything i can't do anything so it's like even if somebody tries to start that movement you either have the extreme of, of like people are really revolutionary and angry and they want to change it or the extreme of like they are so kind of like they're so out kind of, of they're yeah, out they're of so it. kind of out of it that like yeah. oh like you don't even get the support from people that you're trying to help. So yeah. it's it's kind of the exacerbation of two extremes, and I think um, or, I think it makes or, it really or, hard. Or do the third person, which was me in college, was like just so oblivious to everything. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, like I was I, just turning up in college. I had no right. clue what was going on. Right. Uh, no, and, that, that was me too. I was like, God, like yeah. And be, it, they fill up, be mad like about what? I, like I'm supposed to be mad about something? Yeah. And they're like. I'm I'm gonna party real quick. I'm drunk. Yeah, like no, like uh, initiatives no, like, that we planned yeah. even through Alpha or mm-hmm. like the Black Student Union yeah. planned. A lot of times we would not barely have any support from the Black community on those fronts because there was not a culture there that was conducive mm-hmm. to that sort of thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. like like I said, like there's a bunch of intersections between HBCUs and mm-hmm. PWI activism because yeah. at the end of the day. We, you know, marginalized groups are always intersecting. But on a racial front, which is what you asked, Mm -hmm. on a racial front, I do believe it's so much harder because you have to deal with so many extremes. And the nature of the disenfranchisement itself is based on, a lot of times it's based on race and the fact that they don't understand your experience. And by way of not understanding your experience, they don't, in their mind, it's not important to them because that is not the base that they are trying to cater to. Yeah. So a lot of times yeah. they you're you're kind of in this, the the um the your needs based on that your cultural needs are kind of ignored and I saw that a lot in that a mm. lot of people there were just unhappy that were African Americans they would often transfer or just were like I'm never coming back here once I graduate because I don't feel like this school was for me you know oh talking about it's alumnus yeah there's a, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of apathy uh, with alumnus as well a lot of them. They graduate like, and they're yeah, done with the yeah, school. Yeah, like, like they don't donate, they don't come back. Like I, I know my school in different areas of the country, they'll have something called CNU Day, yeah. where kind of graduates come together and they'll go to like a bar or like a restaurant or something, just like yeah. mingle and, and and they were saying like a lot of administration that I know that they don't have a lot of black people coming to that stuff, and there's they a don't. reason for that because yeah. Yeah. like they they didn't make our priority. Feel as though it was, or not our, our priority. Our I get, culture I get feel that. As it was well, I don't get that. I mean, uh, I said I don't get it, but I do see that. Like, if it's not a focus or not, like really catered, to, not catered to, but like focused on, then you get jaded, and you. And I think there's two ways you be jaded. Either you jaded and you're super angry and vocal, yeah. or you jaded and you just cut off. Like you know, like mm. you get burnt. Some people when they're in a bad relationship or bad. Relationship mm-hmm. with anything, either they go full tilt and become angry, right, or they become full tilt and just disengage, mm-hmm. which is one or two things. Rather than being angry and being full tilt and just really get into it, mm-hmm. and I, I I I do see that, and that's in the bigger scheme of bringing it back, is I see a lot of people that are angry with the government or angry with what's going on, and they mm-hmm. either take two two advantages, either they go hard, or they literally just completely cut off from political involvement yeah and they just go about they put their head down head to the to the grindstone work their nine to five and say i have nothing to do with politics i have yeah. nothing to do with any of this stuff right this has nothing to do with me i'm so so jaded from this process 
that all I do is just make sure that there's food on the table for my kids. Right, and, and I think it's a larger discussion on how do we that are involved in the political sphere say, like, these are the policies and how it it mm-hmm. will and has impacted you. Like a lot, it, like a lot of times, it's not even like the fact that nothing is happening. Maybe there is stuff happening, but like you can't, you just don't understand how it's affecting you. How like like for example, it's like if you're like a you know like a child or something, and it's like mm-hmm. you know you see your parents you know doing all this stuff, providing a house and stuff, but like you didn't see like all the things they had to do to get mm-hmm. the things that you have. Mm-hmm. Like you could say like oh you know nothing's really impacting me, but then you'll see that oh like maybe um, like on a political level, like for example. Um, you know, I know like something like Obamacare is like really controversial, mm-hmm. but something really important with Obamacare was that it stopped, you know, like uh, discrimination based on pre-existing conditions, and it allowed people that were uh, younger than 26 to stay on their parents' insurance, which like was something really good for me. But if I didn't know that, I would just think, oh, I guess that's how the system has always been. So they really haven't changed it, mm-hmm. right? So like the fact that I know that says tells me like, wow, like he. He actually did do something in that area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the research. Yeah, so it's it's like bringing the information to people so that they know how things are going to impact them. To say like, oh, like I don't want that. Like I need to stop that by voting or getting active or by saying like these are the things happening in your community that have actually helped. And this is what it was like before that. You know. Now I love so. that you're politically involved on campus. Uh, shout out to y'all. Shout out to your chapter. Yeah, uh, I saw y'all do some on Instagram called uh, the woke the woke video series. Oh yeah, it was Stay Woke Wednesday. I loved it. I was oh. watching them jumps on Instagram. Yeah, uh, and I, appreciate like, that. First of all, I tell you, I'm telling you, like, I think because I have a podcast, I don't know what I'm what I'm talking about in politics. I, I learn from the young people. Yeah, uh, faculty advisor at MWSP. They asked me. I don't know anything about it. Now I know. I'm a card code, but but the point is, when let, let's bring it to another part of your role when mm-hmm. you were vetting or getting to know someone that was interested in alpha right you 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 are a profate now how important was it that when you were getting to know someone that was interested in your organization because we are alphas now how was it important that the person that was coming to join alpha as a young person that they were politically aware or at least invested in learning about politics right um yeah so profite hat <laughs> Yeah, so uh, on an alpha-centric level, yeah. so I like to think of it as, like, alpha serves so many different purposes. Yeah. Like, and I think, you know, this is something we kind of talked about with, you know, that you said you know wanted me to talk about a little bit, which is, like, wokeness in a way. Yeah. Which is, like, like, I it's that. a... I, let me, let me phrase. I, I'm going to tell you on the yeah. thing. I hate that term. The only yeah. reason why I hate it is because Bama's is overusing it, saying, like, yo, uh... The day is a good day. I'm woke. I'm like, yo, yo, like, I hate it. Like, you're overkilling it. You <laughs> yeah. Know what I'm saying? Like, no, yeah. but we know what woke means. Like, for me, what I what I understand for woke is being you are aware. You're you are woke. Yeah, socially you are aware. Socially aware. Yeah. You are woken. Uh, you know, as my favorite rapper is the third eye. What I'm saying. You see the layers. Yeah, yeah. The, layers. <laughs> the third eye. Shit. I was like, first of all, I was like, what? I used to listen to a lot of rap, and they like say third like eye. Cyclops. I was like, what is the third eye? Oh, now I know the third eye is like. You see, you see more than you see. I'm like, okay. Some, First, uh, the mumbo like jumbo. Stuff. Yeah, mumbo <laughs> jumbo. but the point is being yeah. well, being aware, being aware. I yeah. like that, being aware. So, yeah. talk but, about that awareness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like with so like with with Alpha mm-hmm. and and kind of going into the woke movement, I feel like a fatal flaw of the woke movement is like a lot of times what you're talking about, like not making people feel bad that they don't know. And bringing them to the conversation yeah. and saying, like, look, it's okay that you don't know. I'm not going to tell you off in a condescending manner mm-hmm. or in a way that mm-hmm. it kind of feeds my superiority complex or my ego mm-hmm. and say, like, man, you don't know that? Like, what's wrong with you? Or, like, yeah, are you I'll, dumb? Like, are you yeah. dumb or something? Like, yeah. you mm-hmm. should, like, feel bad for that. And it's like, nah, like, allowing sharing information mm-hmm. and allowing people to freely come to it. Or choose not to. It's really mm. a choice. So with mm. Alpha, that's what I try to do. I don't for I don't say like, 
oh, you're an alpha. Like, you have to know about this stuff. Like, nah. Like, I'm going mm-hmm. to share with you information, and you have the you have the autonomy to freely come to it or not. Mm. But the, the main thing with alpha is that it's a school for the better making of men, and you can accomplish that in so many different ways, and it doesn't have to necessarily be with social justice. It could be, mm. you know, in, in just improving yourself as a man doesn't necessarily mean you know, social justice. So, although I think that's a, I think that's essential. Like somebody else yeah. that may not be important to them at that time, yeah. or for other reasons. So, I try to share that with everybody, especially with my brothers. But I also understand, like that's just not everyone's priority. Well, also you know? it's different pockets. Like, uh, right. like my lane. I, I know in my lane. Uh, I told you right now, I'm not a political brother. Uh, my lane is education. I love education. I love mm-hmm. anything that has to do with youth. And I love anything to do with mentorship. So that's my that's my lane. Mm. I know other people. I got brothers that they love the money aspect, like you know, mm. like make sure that we raise funds to for, to 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 keep the organization running. Right? There's right. there's different skills you bring. Um, but I, I definitely love that we you touch upon about the wokeness thing mm-hmm. and why I hate woke is yeah. because what a lot of people do when they say I'm woke is it comes off with the condescending tone, like, oh, I'm so awoken. I see things that you don't see. And I was like, first of all, like, not everyone, like, remember when you learned something for the first time? Can you have some empathy? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. have some empathy. Like, yeah, definitely. Not everyone, yeah. like, I, I, that's, why, that, that's why I think a lot of people are very, very turned off, by it, right? turned off by politics yeah. and political engagement right. in it's general. It's like this elitist kind of, like, They're, it's like no, an elitist it. kind of, You nailed like, it. You nailed yeah, it. it's like an elitist kind of feeling that it, that, like, oh. I, I know better than you because either I have a higher status than you, either I'm, like, have more money than you, or this kind of, like, I know. subjective view that I worked harder than you. Yes. When working yes. hard is like, yes. you know, it's such so subjective in we, itself. We already talked about it. We already talked about what I, what I and, and I'm taking it to the next step level is that a lot of people are disengaged with getting, young people are disengaged yeah. with getting involved in politics because when they see a politician and they look at the politician's bio, it's all this money and, and it's like, yo, like, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to get there. And, and I, we talked about this earlier. Like, if I want to get politically involved, I want to be a, a committee holder. I want to be this. And you look at the bio, it's like, well, I don't have no, I don't have no master's degree. And it's like, um, you can get politically involved at the local level by just showing up, doing, um, I'm learning this myself. It's like, a lot of these people that you look up to in politics, they just started doing Small stuff like knocking on doors, or mm-hmm. uh, every time there was an election, they were the ones handing out those cards to uh, yeah, yeah. tell you to vote for. Yeah, the, like they the, they volunteered, yeah. but we see all these politicians at the top where it was like, oh, they got a lot of money, and they use their money to get their campaigns funded, but we don't look at the not, the normal Joe Smo that's involved in politics, just like me and you, that volunteered a bunch of times or maybe helped with the uh, voter booth or the polls, mm-hmm. and they got involved politically just mm-hmm. by normal and, and that's, volunteerism. That's a you know good point, because I think that's also another failure on the part of the mainstream media. I mean, like, thank God for YouTube. Thank mm-hmm. God for, like, Spotify <laughs> and, yeah. like, so many of those platforms that allow, like, new media such as yourself or, like, other YouTube shows or whatever the case may be. Just asking and, questions, and the yeah. internet in general has been such a great invention yeah. for, like, cutting through that. Because a lot of times, like, like okay, so when you watch, like, a lot of these news companies, a lot of times they're owned by, like, entertainment companies and they're trying to make money. So, like, they want to do the juiciest, most, like, craziest thing. Like, that's yeah. what, why do you think they cover, like, Trump so much? Because, like, he just says, like, crazy stuff. And they just like want to cover it because like that yeah. gets people talking. Like local it's politics, not, it's local not politi- actually important. Yeah, local politics None is not as right. Local, all that poli- stuff. local politics is not exciting. Yeah, like like <laughs> like for example, they they yeah. will report on like I don't know if people remember this, but like Donald Donald Trump literally called like uh, one of the like porn stars he was like cheating on his wife with like a Story horse Daniels. face. Yeah, he called her horse face on Twitter. Like, and they were covering that for like days. And it's like that's not a real story. I right? know, like that. Yeah. Like if I, if I'm really like about the people, I'm not gonna cover that. It's nonsense. Like you know, it has, that's just not. It has nothing that's to do with just not important. That's it has nothing that's to do nonsense. With the policy. Right. That's nothing nonsense. Right. It doesn't affect anyone's life. Like you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So like, like maybe that's like a maybe a headline on the bottom. But like, 
the fact that they spend days covering that, that sort of stuff, and then like actual things like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, the the fact that his his uh, housing and I think housing and urban uh, mm-hmm. development wing, uh, it's called HUD. Um, they have ben prosecuted. Carson. Well, they yeah, Ben Carson has yeah. prosecuted thirty thousand. He's left thirty thousand uh, claims of. He, he won't even look at them. 30,000 claims of uh, racial discrimination in the housing market on his desk. He won't even touch them. Um, and things like that, or, or even kind of Trump's rollback of FDA regulations, mm-hmm. or even, you know, not, not to make it biased, like even on a Democratic That's side. Not, it's not juicy now. Well, well, yeah, even on a, on a Democratic side, you know, the fact that they're saying, you know, we're about equality and we're about this and that, and we have like Ralph Northam posing in blackface or... You know, they we have them accepting money from the health insurance companies and things like that to finance their campaigns. And it's like, they don't talk about that. They want to talk about how somebody's calling somebody names. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so, so like, they ignore it. They ignore yeah, the real like, factors. Exactly. So I, I think really just to that previous point, like, it, that is really like a failure of the the mainstream media to to, like, actually, like, inform people of like what is happening because like mm-hmm. a lot those, those shows get millions upon millions of views daily and they're talking about nonsense at the end of the day you yeah. know what i'm saying and it's like they are responsible for how polarized our system is now mm-hmm. because it's just like this mass hysteria about stuff that doesn't really matter yeah. so it's just like mm-hmm. you induce these strong feelings in people where like oh i really don't like that abstract thing that the Democrats did. So I'm never voting for them, even though the policy may be something that actually helps you. And it's the same thing on a, on a, on with the Republican or conservative side. It's like, I don't like superficially what's going on, so I'm going to completely ignore the substance because it's all about theater and not about substance. Yeah. And, you know what I'm but, saying? But in, in, in regards to the wokeness, and I think one of the things that has been one of my coming to a long-term thing is that what has really humanized me in my experience with politics, Yeah, and that's why I, I wrote on Facebook, is my interaction with young people. Mm. But it's just like where it was brought home, where we have discussions where it wasn't the theater, theatrical part. It was like, mm-hmm. yo, Philip, I, I need you to talk about the NWSAP and be my faculty advisor. And I was helping them with just straight up mm-hmm. stuff that I can see in my face, like real concrete stuff Mm -hmm. and then uh just in general with local government and we talked about earlier was like i can see concretely x y and z will affect my schools like i can see like i that's why i need to be i i need to care about the local stuff because if i did this and this and they move district lines or change free reduced lunch or Mm -hmm. change taxes and they're they're not gonna fund another bus fleet then my kids won't go to school. Like, like now, I'm looking at it like the fine tuned comb. Like, which one's gonna affect my kids? <laughs> like, like, oh, they're not gonna get the lunch. You know, like, so. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah. think what's really hard for people to see that is like we don't have no time to really think about that because we see the e, we see the e entertainment news side of, of politics, yeah. but we don't see the fine tuned comb. Like, read through these boring long paragraphs. Yeah. I swear, like, I looked at the back. Look at long. Look at the long paragraph and look at how much when they say, we will not pay, like, this much and we're going to cut your whole soccer team. Like, then no one's no one look, reads that whole thing because they're like, they just said, okay, no, yes, no. But did, did you look at the fine tooth thing when it's like, if you say yes, they're going to cut your soccer team. Mm-hmm. Like, bring it home. Like, bring it to yourself. Like, yeah. at your current situation. And one of the scariest, that, that's why I am really adamant about young people getting involved in you is like having the stuff is not the national level like do you realize how many decisions are being made and you have no voice i mean you have a voice but you didn't say nothing and then you're going to complain about it like complain that the road is different or they repaved the road or they changed the school district Mm -hmm. and it just snapped like it happens and people are voting and only two people raise their hand and say i or yes no and they hit the gavel and no one else noticed what happened. And you look right. around, and you look around the room, and it was like, "Yo, did you realize what they just voted on mm-hmm. that no one cared about?" Yeah, like, like I think two things that are really important on the local side is like education, yes, and uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, 
education definitely education and, and like affordable housing yeah like that oh, is that's that is Jack, something that's a, that is that's what brother john chapman said that's yeah like that is a really localized issue you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying that's like one of the, biggest the, the government knows. can i mean the the only thing the federal government can do is like put like rent control but the rent yeah. control or 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 any other policy is going to be so broadly applied that it's not going to have the nuance it needs yeah. that for p- specific regions. Like for example, like if I made a hundred thousand dollars in New York, like d- like you're living paycheck to paycheck almost. But like if I make um, like a hundred thousand in Alabama, mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm gonna be swimming in cash. Like you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. it's like yeah. it's like when you have that kind of federal program, it's not going to have the nuance it needs to truly like impact the most people positive t- positively so you need that kind of like mm-hmm. local perspective of like what is my specific area need you know what i'm saying that's so important and it's like the federal government can only do so much you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying so like especially in those areas like in the schools stuff too mm-hmm. like different regions have like mm-hmm. different industries that are prominent in those regions so the school should probably like train the people for that reason, or at least, you know, train them in a way where they can get a job, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just to have this blank, blanket, federally mandated, um, um, kind of like, uh, what is it called? Uh, kind of like curriculum mm-hmm. that applies so broadly. It's like, well, I'm out. Like, I don't really know what I'm gonna do now. Cause I don't, <laughs> cause the, the skills are so broadly appro- uh, applied. And so it's like, you were exactly right. Like there are so many issues that are, so so much more based in mm-hmm. in like a local power than like the kind of national or like federal government and, and kind of I, want, I kind of do want to get back to like wokeness a little bit yeah so yes, yeah so I feel like you know being woke as a movement is in, inherently bad right because it, it's about social justice and mm-hmm. it's about mm-hmm. um, being aware of what's going on despite like any disinformation or just like mm-hmm. the high volume of information that mm-hmm. you're absorbing mm-hmm. and but it, it it becomes an issue like we're talking about when you convey that knowledge or wisdom in a way that's like condescending mm-hmm. and it feeds your ego more than it is to help others mm-hmm. right yes, so yes. like if you're if you're in that category where you're like you know i'm woke like i want to you know i have all this knowledge that i want to share like conveying that knowledge in an uplifting and also something that's underrated is like a streamlined manner too like a manner that like is digestible for somebody mm-hmm. that doesn't understand right like mm-hmm. i like if i'm talking to somebody for the first time about like an issue i'm not gonna like use all these like big words you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. or or use these or like yeah. for example like Something, or, or something like, I've like what I've learned too, like one of the biggest help is like, uh, like what I know about who's in office. Mm-hmm. I, I love hierarchy charts. Like, this is the governor. This is who reports to him. Like, I need to visually see right the different layers. Right. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know who all these people are right. and all these committees. Yeah. No, I see it. All. I, I I'm a visual learner. Like, I know all the d- different departments. Right. Like you're right. Yeah. Like, like, like it's like yeah. it's like simplified. Simp- mm-hmm. You know, simplifying in it. It, it in a way that can be easily mm-hmm. understood mm-hmm. and is not in like it, it's like you got that old saying you got to meet people where they're at yes. not where you want them to be yes you know what I'm saying yes. so and then and then I think we need to be careful um, not to engage in like fake wokeness which is oh, okay. which is this like idea that like like for example okay like if I like like a lot of people like you see a lot of people like go you know, on a show or like you see them on TV and they'll say something and because they're using big words, you're like, you know what? On a surface level, that sounds good. Like, it sounds good. Mm-hmm. But then if you do any sort of digging, you're like, wait, wait a second. Like, you, you just, you totally twisted that or it's just like not true. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So you have to be careful of like, not just like accepting the things like as a person that's learning, you not just accepting like what you see and saying like, Okay, that makes sense initially, but I'm not going to put all my stock into it until I actually do some deep digging. Mm. So we have to be careful with people that sound smart, but like if you actually dig a little bit, they're not. You know what I'm saying? They're not woke. They're not knowledgeable. They don't have this like elevated sense of wisdom that they're trying to like no. convey. You uh, know what I'm saying? That's hard to balance though because yeah. if someone's on TV and they're doing big things, you're like, you automatically assume that they know more than you. 
Well, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, no, no, no. I was, like, I, I'm not I, saying. I'm not saying that there's I no get, credibility. No, to no that, I get. No, I mean, know? no, I mean, yeah. I get. No, I, I, I totally get what you're saying, but it's like that's that's the that's the blindness where, uh, yeah, uh, you know, if someone's already politically uh, involved mm. and they're in office, and you're like trying to talk to them, and they talk to you with big words, you're like, well, I'm just gonna take what they said as right. Like, like, okay, like let's for let's the same analogy. Mm. I'm not a doctor. I go to the doctor, and I don't know. Any, I, I tell them my symptoms, but I don't do no research. The doctor can be like, yo, you got cancer, you're going to die. I'm like, yo, that doctor knows what they're talking about. They're a doctor. I just gonna, I just trust them blindly, you know, because I don't do no research on my right. own. But then a lot of doctors, you could also alternatively say they give you, like, for example, the opioid crisis. Just give you medicine because, like, that's in their best interest as far as money. So it's like... Yeah, but you trust that. Because, right, and it's, because you it's didn't really... Do, that's why Because you didn't do yeah. no research on your own. Right. Doctor said, oh, you got knee pain. Here, here's a bunch of medicine right. to do it. You know, I'll just take the medicine blindly. Blindly follow what they expert. said. Because yeah. they're an expert. And so with that political involvement to take it back, I'm mean, like, same thing. I don't know anything about these issues. That person's elected in office. I assume that person elected in office an expert or more woke than me or... They have a better. They can uh, let me. Let's say even they're not a, even in office, but they speak better than I do, and and they're they're more liked than I am, and yeah. and they know how to talk to people better than oh, I yeah, do. I'm I shy. I or definitely whatever. understand that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow that person mm -hmm. because they seem more confident than me. So I just they're or more quote unquote woke than me. So I'm just gonna listen to what they say, and I'm not gonna do no research or no no information on my own. And I think it kind of goes to your point, like, and then before you know it, you're following someone because you didn't do no knowledge on your own. And then you just kind of descend into this, like, rabbit hole. And it's, like, yeah. a lot of, it's, very and it's, uh, it's easier said than done. I'm not no, saying, it's very yeah. hard. Because yeah. I, I, I look up to a lot of people that have bigger platforms than me, and I'll say, yo, that's it. That's fact. What they just said out their mouth is fact because they smart. And then... You know, like you said, it's very hard to do your own research and like realize, oh, maybe there's some different opinions out there. Maybe there's some contradictory opinions, but that means that you have to like actually do some research. So it's easier just to listen to someone that has more knowledge than you, quote unquote, mm -hmm. on the surface. Mm -hmm. No, hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Now, I want to talk. What are some practical tips? You're in college. Yeah. What are some practical tips? For a young person mm -hmm. to know what is going on, what yeah. what what do they follow on social media? What do they need to watch on TV? What YouTube channels? And let, let's say this is your opinion, but these yeah. are some, some good suggestions as a young person to another young person. Okay, uh, yeah. So I would say, so my political affiliation kind of like leans left. I would say. Yeah, there you go. Be yeah. honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Me too. But but. This, this is a nonpartisan <laughs> podcast. Right. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but no, yeah, but like yeah, I, I, I still, I do my best yeah. to follow. Like I, I follow like a bunch of accounts that I really do not agree with at all. Like, you do the opposite. My mom no, no, no. I, I follow like re the Republican pages. I follow a lot of conservatives. Yeah. That I just okay. like, Don't agree with. But you and watch. I just do it because I look at it and then I'm like, oh, like, you know, yeah. why? Why is what they're saying is why is it wrong? You know, like, why yeah. do I believe it's wrong? What my is mom, my defense? My mom used to listen to Rush you know, Limbaugh on purpose. Yeah, like, it's like, she what is it. my defense to what that person is saying? So I would encourage people to look at both sides of the aisle. Mm. Um, follow Republican pages. Like, don't, mm -hmm. don't like, just mm. cut out a page just because you don't agree with it. Follow both sides of the aisle. Even follow mm. stuff that isn't to do with the two-party system. Follow, like, a socialist page. Follow mm. a libertarian page. Mm. Like, all, there's all these yes. different spectrums yes. that we yeah. don't explore because we live in this kind of, like, you know, two-party system we oh, were talking like about that. earlier. So, like, you know, I follow, the, you know, Democratic Socialist pages. I follow mm. okay. um, the Democratic pages and, you know, Republican pages, like I said. So, I mean, I, I would say some, you know, like, I would say if you're looking for, like, mm. more liberal stuff, uh, more, like, you know, uh, kind of democratic socialism, social democracy, like kind mm -hmm. of left wing ideologies. Um, I think uh, several good ones are like Mother Jones. Mm. Um, that's a good one. Follow like the NAACP, National uh, National Urban League. 
uh, mm. Justice Democrats, mm. um, and I follow like Politico too. Uh, Politico is a good one. Okay. And then uh, on a conservative side, I would say like people like uh, you know Charlie Kirk, um, Larry Elder, uh, just like I'm just listening to, like famous ones like Candace, yeah. Candace Owens. You follow her to um, see what she's talking about. Yeah, just just to see what she's talking about to say like, okay, what? Why is like. Why is my mm. worldview like why I think we should go where we need to mm. go? And like, what would my rebuttal to be like? No, like, that's not actually true. Or like, okay, I get that, but this is actually better, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you yeah. know, the, those type of things. And, and this is all stuff off the top of my head. Like, I, you know, there's now, besides, like a bunch besides of, the following part, what are some yeah. action things they can do? Okay, for yeah. young people, young people. Yeah, so um, action things. So, uh, again, like, a lot of people say, you know, don't believe everything on the internet, but like, yeah. I think that's more to refer to, like, if you're reading, like, uh, you know, the Washington mm. Post or something mm-hmm. like that, because, you know, a lot of those are, are like, skewed towards, like, you know, liberal or conservative outlets, you know, this kind of, like, newspaper, because, again, yeah. that's kind of like that, mm. going back to the, to the entertainment stuff, like, a lot of, like, newspapers is, like, it's news. It's like a business. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it and, and a lot of a lot of those kind of traditional news sources, New York Times, mm. Washington Post, those are traditional news sources kind of built on the establishment of like entertainment, especially as we've gotten more into like the digital age. I think before they were more had more integrity, but now they're kind of losing it a little bit. So I would say um, make sure that you invest in like new media. And you actually look at scholarly articles. Because the scholarly articles are actually the ones, even if they have like a conservative liberal bias, they are they do a lot of research. What's 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 the scholarly article mean? Okay, so like for example, uh, there's things called like so scholarly article is something written by a scholar, like any type of professor or researcher or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Researcher or anything that has done extensive research on something and it was peer reviewed and published by like a, a, a legit yeah. publication. So you, like it's a like Google so, Scholar. Yeah, like so. So if you can type in the search t- parameters for yeah, Google like or, or any any of these like centers of kind of like intelligentsia, mm. like for example the Brookings Institution. Mm. Um, that's one. Okay. Or like the the Her- you know something on the conservative ties, like the Heritage Foundation. Jeez, you drop or it. or um, yeah. Thing. What's another one? But this uh, is good. Like a, this. yeah, there's like centers for like. Uh, what is it called? That something I was looking up earlier is like the Brennan Center for Justice. Mm. Like just those places that are organizations that are built upon research mm. and uh, and academia because they do their research. They're not like even though they may have a skew, it's like they're doing that skew and they're, they're, and, they're, and they're bringing numbers. And yeah, this. and they're bringing numbers and they're bringing different points of view mm. so you want to look at that instead of like someone just like like op-eds they're valuable and stuff and it's like mm. oh okay like that's going to contribute to my worldview but like you really want to base your ideas off of these scholarly articles so um one i would say uh being more knowledgeable is really about the source in which you're getting your information mm. make sure you're looking up okay i like this article but i'm going to look up like a bias checker because there's like if you look up bias checker on Google, it'll give you um it'll give you there's like a, a <laughs> couple of sites. Oh, no, was a, there's a thing called bias checker. Yeah, well, <laughs> like, well there's there's like a fact there's like factcheck.org for yes, example, yeah. and no they'll, they'll give you like the rating of like what the source okay. you're using as far wow. as like what bias they have and if are they truthful. Like for example, the the Heritage Foundation, like I was saying, it's a conservative think tank, right? So for them. They are far right, but they show you. They tell but you, but they they give you the information about why. But on on some aspects, though, for example, climate change, they'll like ostensibly deny like facts. But but in uh, in other cases, like the economy and stuff like that, they actually cite data and stuff like that. So and I and I think it a, is is that a, is that a chart? It tells yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it's a chart and everything. Wow. So it's like it's like. You just want to be careful. It's like you know, mm-hmm. some some sources are good for some things and not for others. Mm-hmm. And even if they are biased, bias doesn't necessarily mean bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you know, like, and, like and, if and I'm my, biased, and, and my, like you can buy be biased and still be right. Like, yeah, but, but my, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But my point is, all the things you said is a lot of work, and people are lazy. 
<laughs> like, no, 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 like no. that's a lot of work to I don't think about, people, like. I don't think people are lazy though, because like I think I think it's just about structuring. I think people are lazy as a by, and this is my view now. I'm going and more. It, I'm talking view. about the internet. The, the yeah. information is there. And it's like, yo, all these things you told me are great resources. Yeah. But then I got like, I know I had to look at this one, but then I got to check it. And it like, it's like, at what point is like, you'll do it. Like, you have to yeah. like, realize what's valid or not. It's right. a lot of work. And it, and it, and it, and it looks kind of like this, right? So I think that's, that's like some, I think that's like a systemic issue. And, and this is my opinion now. Mm. My, so like anytime like people, aren't motivated to do something as as kind of a large body not mm-hmm. like individuals i feel like that is a systemic failure on our part like what are we not doing to make people understand like this stuff is important like um i i think participation is essential to any democracy mm-hmm. so are we just saying that people are lazy and that and if you agree with me on that front as far as like it, participation being essential to democracy mm-hmm. like you would be conceding if you're saying that humans are just naturally lazy, that we cannot uphold democracy. You know what I'm saying? And I disagree. Like, I believe that we can uphold democracy. So for me, it's like, what? how are we structuring the system in a way that makes people disengage? Because, mm-hmm. like, for example, uh, a lot of people, you know, I, I would say, like, you, you care about your community. You said you're in the NAACP and you do all that stuff. Yeah. How did you go? Because you, cause you first said that, you you know, you weren't engaged. But then now you're doing all this stuff. So, obviously, there's a way in which no, we can motivate no. people. Your way just happened to be through Alpha. No, my, no. My, no it's not just Alpha. And, also, <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, right? your wife. And, yeah, my wife. But, but, and, but, and no, but think about it. It's there were things the, put in your life, life, life external uh, to you. Uh, like right? External events and life events Yeah, and, and people connection. Mainly, I would say people connection yeah. brought me to involvement. Right, so... so how can we as a system make an interaction between the individual and the system to where that change happens? It's, so you gotta you gotta touch upon the personal part and you gotta, right. and you gotta touch upon um like literally like I said, I said for myself, is that like you gotta touch upon like uh does your mom, your dad, your sister, this mm-hmm. affects them or this affects a college kid that you're looking out for. Yeah. Uh, like I, as I said earlier, I'll be on record. I was not an active member of NAACP yeah. until I realized that young people that were very, very adamant about this organization uh, needed my help, mm-hmm. and I wanted to help them. I don't. I, I hope. I and they say, "Yo, we want to do FACP, whatever." And they was like, "Philip Wilkerson, I need your help. I'm gonna do it." Yeah. And so I have a connection to NAACP. Solely, not solely, but now mainly through, and I'll shout them out, Dominique and and Shelby, yeah. because I shout care. Out, about, shout I, out. No, I care about. <laughs> th- I cared about them, and I was like, I don't want their their organization to die on campus, and I don't want this young person that really cares about something yeah, to not have point. someone it has to be personable. Yeah, it's yeah. Per- that, that's it. It's that's personal, it. Yeah. That was personal to me. Like, if the, if, if if the NWCP chapter on JMU died. And I didn't know them. I'd be, be quite you. honestly. Be on you I was like, no, bit, no. Right? If I didn't know them, and I, I didn't know anything yeah. about it, it died. No, if it died under my watch because it died because, uh, sh- let's say Shelby and Dominique reached out to me, and after they reached out to me, it died. Yeah, that's on me. Yeah. That is on me 100%. because someone reached out for my help. I refused to help them, and an organization that was going to do good on a campus yeah. died because. I, as a as a bystander, yeah. I didn't do nothing about it. Yeah. But now it, it is personal to me. I have a personal investment yeah. in those young people. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you right now, nationally, nationally in WCP, I can care less. <laughs> I'm telling this on the podcast. I love y'all in WCP. I don't. I don't care less. I don't care. I care. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't care. I don't get me. I care about I care about the NWCP because I see when I look at that organization I see Dominique and Shelby mm-hmm. I see the people I that, get that I I see the people that reached out to me that need my help and because they need my help I'm not talking about stroking my ego but yeah. they they personalize to me if I let that chapter I don't talk about the organized nation yeah. but if I let the chapter die at George Mason 
and it was because someone reached out to me, that is on me. I, I, I was a bystander in something that was under my watch. Yeah. That and, makes sense. And that and yeah. I think that that trickles down into mm-hmm. the local government. Mm-hmm. You know, someone says, Oh my God, the nation is in shambles. I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't care. <laughs> but I was like, yo, <laughs> yo, hey, our neighborhood's in shambles. Well, the school system is yeah, in shambles. Yeah, yeah, your school system is shambles. Yeah, 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 my yeah, roads. You know Philip Wilkerson, help me. Yeah. Help me with Braddock Road. Help me with the road that I live in. Yeah. And I don't do nothing about it. That's on me because I see it. I'm in it. I'm mm-hmm. in the community. And that's what yeah, I told you earlier. I point. told you. I told you. I ain't never get involved in anything beyond my community. Yeah. I don't care. You, yeah, hey, no, I'll a, tell you this. Like hey, Philip Wilkerson is not running for any election uh, anything beyond Virginia <laughs> or be- beyond Braddock because yeah. if it don't, I care about the kids. <laughs> no. The kids, man. Yeah. No, but I, I do want to get back, get back to it's, kind it's of the short, me. the short list of like things people can do. Yeah, what can you so, do? So again, like going back to just looking at different sources and making sure you fact test those sources and yeah. making sure yeah. it's from diverse backgrounds of ideology wise. And I think also it's it's about getting out in your community and meeting people. Mm-hmm. I think when yep. I think when we meet people and we're able to kind of like mm-hmm. have that human experience of connection. Yes. That yes. not only like with the issues but the connection as far as like, yo, like these are my homies, like and we're doing this thing together, like we in this thing together. That's it. You know what I'm That's saying? It. And That's like what whatever it. happens is is gonna affect them as well. Mm-hmm. So I think getting your friends to like hey like let's let's go to this like debate watch party like or even like taking that leap of faith and going by yourself to like a n w a c p meeting or a ta- or or a town mm. council meeting or mm. not town or or city council meeting yes yeah of course things yeah. like that yeah. and going there and like meeting people and just like being exposed yeah. to the to the political yeah. process yeah and just finding an issue that you really care about yeah. through your research like Wow, like that's really happening with education. Like, yeah. education is actually really important now, to me. Like, that's messed up. Now, like, I yeah. need to go to the city council. I need to talk to him about that. And I will say that too. Uh, in, in, the, in the political sphere, uh, the one that I've attached myself the most, you said affordable housing. I mean, I care about it, but yeah. the one that attached me the most is education and yeah, access. You got kids, man. Well, well I have that's... access to it, but I work in higher ed. Yeah, that's And I it, see yeah. how it affects my job. I see how, uh, let's talk about schools, and I see the pipeline, and, you know, kids are not prepared for yeah. test, assess, you know. And, like, so, like, it, it, I think one of my tips is find one issue. At least find one issue that is very personal to you. Mm. Have you ever noticed the, like, you know, my dad got cancer, so now I'm all about access to to uh, chemo. You know, like like you get politically involved when right. you find it matters to you. Right, and and it also, I feel like politics is such a thing. You're like, oh my god, like, yeah, it's boring, or it's yeah. like, what what is yeah. this? this? Is like nonsense. But it's like. To yeah. me, yeah. isn't it exciting about the possibility of like we could eliminate poverty? Like, is that not exciting? I don't know. Like, uh, that's yeah, exciting I, to me. Uh, like, like the fact I want to do it. No, like it, it's yeah. like it, like imagine imagine the lives you could change if we eliminated poverty. Yes. Like okay. imagine how, like, how okay. imagine yeah. okay. imagine because like like poverty as a as a manifestation actually hurts the economy. Like a lot of people are like. Oh, you know, they, they you know, they we didn't work. One, they didn't need, work hard enough. We need one percenters. We need, we need, yeah, to like have, they, we need to have nots and halves because that's the yeah, system but, and how but, it works. Yeah. But actually, the economy is not only run by the people that produce it, but that produce kind of the yeah. the products and services. But you can't have you can't sell products and services without consumers. So if you have people that don't have money, like. Then you're shrinking your consumer base, right? Yeah. So then you're shrinking the Man, flow. Of if money I was a business, I can't even know why to buy myself because they all broke. Right. So so yeah. imagine yeah. what that could do for your community if more money is flowing through it through tax revenue and just like I think a lot of the reason some businesses fail is because there just isn't a monetary like people may value the product they may want it but there's just not like a enough monetary like mm-hmm. means in the community or base to support it. So. Imagine how many businesses or ideas that like are kind of discretionary, they're optional, such as a podcast, 
you know, more people donating to causes. Like, just, like, things like that. Your community could be so much better. And, like, everything that you benefit from in your community could be so much better if we could eliminate these social issues that just continue to plague us. And for me, that's really exciting. So I think it's the way we think about it, too. It's like, uh, it's not just about people arguing on the TV. It's not about just reading the articles. Mm. It's about, like, wow, bro, I can really change my life. I can change my community. I can make people's lives better. Like, that's exciting. And it's like, you know, a lot of my work, like, for example, um, I'm I'm working with an organization called Campus Election Engagement Project, mm -hmm. uh, uh, most likely next semester. Um, and what kind of my boss is teaching me is, like, we need to make this fun by having, like, for example, voter registration parties. We have a party, but then we encourage people to, when they come, hey, like, register a vote right now. Yeah, do it right now. Like, just, just do it right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or, like, going on the internet and, and sharing something through, like, a media platform through, like, a video where you're, like, telling jokes in the video or, like, something like that or have some type of other theatrical thing going on with it. It's, like... We can do so many things to make this fun, and the way we think about it can make it fun. It can make it worthwhile more than like, oh, I'm just doing this because I have to. Yeah. But well, that's what, that, you know, and, that, and that's what yeah. normal people did. I vote because I have to. Is it's it, not engaging, right? Exactly. And also, it's not personal. And uh, what I what I have noticed a long for a long time is that we dehumanize our elected officials. And we don't remember that there are people just like us. Yeah, that's a great point. No, I, 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 from now on, I'm like, like I told you that, like, I reach out to people. I don't care who they are. They could, they could be ten to worst case scenario, they don't answer me. But my elected officials are human beings just like me. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that I know on the local level, homeboy, I look at their bio. I'm just as, and not to be cocky, I'm just as accomplished. Mm -hmm. Is that they knew about the opportunity to to run. Yeah. A lot of people don't run for the local stuff just because they don't know. Right. Exactly. So, like, in, in conclusion, and the moral of the story is, like, you know, get involved in your community. Yes. yes. Make it personable to you. Find yes. an issue yes. Yes. that is important to you and build off of that yeah, go. into other issues. Yeah. Bring a friend. Yeah. Make connections at these yeah. places. And when you're doing your research, remember the purpose in it. And yeah. remember that, yeah. you know, remember that, like, this is, like, so you can get informed and so you can better your community. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? You know what you're doing it for. Right. Know what you're doing it for. I love it. it. Yeah. All right. So this is the part of the show called Shot for Shot. Okay. Meaning we're not drinking alcohol. <laughs> um, <Darn>. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're, you can ask me any question related to this oh, topic. I can, I can ask you a question. Any question related to this topic or not, Yeah. I answer. It's, like, kind of true for there, but there's no there yeah and i ask you any question related to the topic or not that's it you go first i go first mm, so you said related to the topic or not or not yes yeah, uh, random question shot for shot just ask me a question oh, so, damn. you want me to go first or you go first you think it i'll go first let me think for a second uh all right so dang that's that's good <laughs> you caught me on guard with that that's what i do it all the time <laughs> um damn. i already know my question for you Hmm. Blah, 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 blah. What what is so? Yeah. What would you what, see? This is kind of it's kind of an abstract question. I love abstract. Do it. <laughs> um. So, what is something like? What is something you like love to do mm -hmm. that you like think is weird that you like wouldn't share with like a stranger? Uh, first of all. Uh, or do you just share everything? Yeah. <laughs> so there Sorry, is bad question. There's a lot of no. So there's a lot of weird questions, but I mean weird things I do. Yeah. But I don't have any. I, I as I've gotten older. Yeah. As I've gotten more full in myself, I realize that if I do have weird things I do. Yeah. And I share it with one person or not, most times people don't care. But we already talked about this earlier. Mm -hmm. I am a man child. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah. have, I have two children, but I am a child. I, I I didn't grow up. I'm in the Peter Pan syndrome, and so I still hold on to childlike things, mm. such as Pokemon. Duh! I will nerd out. You, see, you saw fan. it. I'm not gonna lie. You see it. You see it. Right I had there. I had the uh, fat book. 
I got the Switch. I got also, I didn't show you, but I got the Game Boy with the uh, Pokemon Yellow. Mm. And so there's a lot of things where I, I still play video games, but I, I play the old school jumps. Like, I'm still 14. Mm. And so that's my, like, my thing. Like, and I, I, I do it because it's fun. Like, you know, like, I, 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 uh, I've learned over time. Um, now, I can do the work as an adult. I can adult like anyone else. I can switch it on. I can take care of my kids. I can be responsible. Mm-hmm. I can pay bills. I can do all that, blah, blah, blah. But there's sometimes where I'm like, yeah, I don't have to grow up completely. Like, this is funny. I have literally the sense of humor of a 14-year-old mm-hmm. that if it's a funny meme, someone falling down the stairs, it's hilarious to me. <laughs> Facts. Like, I literally still look at Instagram videos. That's that's why I think uh, God blessed me and put me in higher ed. Because yeah. I literally uh, have not graduated out of college mentally. Yeah. Like, I still think things are funny. The other day, no, like today, yeah. uh, I'm on Apple Music, and yeah. I'm listening to rap music from my students. Mm-hmm. I have no clue who any of these people <laughs> are, Yeah. and I'm turning up. So my, my random fact is I still like cartoons. I still like video games. I still like things that are quote unquote for kids. Uh, I want to get Disney Plus so I can watch my old cartoons over again. You know, uh-huh. Disney Plus has all my cartoons I grew up on. Oh, I, no, I was hip. watching DuckTales the other day. I'm hip. It was for me. Yeah. I love to cook. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. I will watch cartoons. I love yeah. cartoons. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to grow up. Why? So. That's dope. Really. So here's my two questions. Yeah. One question. You say your parents are not Greek. No. I'm so why Alpha? Sure. That's it. Oh, okay. Uh, let me do my uh, uh, Matt brother Matt Johnson. This is for you. He has three questions. What's up, Matt? Matt does this. He yeah. says, "Why Alpha? Okay. Why now? Right. And then why? What chapter? Uh, uh, what chapter are you in? Upsilon Beta. Yeah. Why that one? That's the three questions. And he did that to me. Mm-hmm. So what's your what's your answer? Those three questions. Why Alpha? Why now in your life? And why your chapter? Uh. So, Alpha, for me, was, uh, so, when I came to college, I knew nothing about fraternities, like, there absolutely nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I went to, uh, like, I, after my freshman, the first semester of my freshman year, I was like, ah, I really, I just want to get more involved on campus. Like, I feel like, okay. I'm not, I feel like I'm not involved, you know? Okay. And then I was just like... Okay. Okay. Like I went to like a, a seminar with a bunch of like the white fraternities and like mm. I, you know, predominantly white fraternities and I like, you know, talked to them. I got a few of their numbers and it was cool. Like I was actually like, oh, I think I'll join one. I think I'll join one. Mm. And then one day I just walked in the dining hall <laughs> and I just them. like I saw just a group of black men. It was like ten of them at the time and they were all wearing suits and just like. Like you just tell, it, they were here and like everyone else was like, over, and you saw these people come up to him. And it was like I was like, who like who are these people? Okay, you know what I'm saying. They're and wearing then, suits. Okay, yeah. And I was just like, I was like, you know, and, and I didn't see them for a while after that, but that always kind of stuck in my head. And then you know after that, I kind of like. You know, I, I saw a flyer around school in regards to an event they were doing, and um, then I was like. Oh, like this is a fraternity. Like I'm interested in joining fraternity, so like I should probably see what this was about. See if like this could be a possible one. So I reached out one of, to one of the brothers, and he told me about it. He actually let me. He was already in it. Yeah, one of the brothers. Yeah, of the of your chapter. Yeah. Okay. So he was, so he was on the campus. Yeah. So he, yeah. I, I just reached out to him, and he he offered. Uh, he told me I should join the intramural team, and then that's how I began just meeting <laughs> brothers. Team, what, what sport yeah. was it? Football. Like, Okay, don't tell, me, don't, oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I was going to say, I was like, if this is ultimate frisbee. I was going. <laughs> no, no, never that. <laughs> but no, I, I just, uh, okay. I was. Uh, so you so, got to know them. Got to yeah, talk to them. yeah. So I, I got to know and talk to them, and they were they were really cool. And then I, you know, we kind of started talking about intake after a while, and they were like, you know, like, and I and I was like, you know, what do I do? And they were like, you know, just make sure you do your research. You know, we have an interest meeting at this time. I was like, bet. So I started doing my research, and I saw, like, M.O.K., yeah, yes. W.E.B. Du Bois, yeah, uh, you yeah. just, Jesse Owens, you just, uh, Cornell West, you just giants, the giants of just, like, yeah, I don't know, just, like, intellect and, like, just yeah. 
just like integrity, right? Yeah. So I, I was just like, wow. And MLK was like my hero growing up. Like I just yeah. admired him so much. And when I found that, I was like, I have to, I have to do this. Like I, if if he saw some worth in this, like there must be something there, yeah. and I need that. And like so, I went to the interest meeting and I saw the brothers talked about it. And I just learned more about Alpha Men being a part of it, like Dick Gregory, mm. um, just just others that were just mm-hmm. like just like yeah. just just a crazy amount of lineage. And so after that, it was it was really all she wrote. And uh, I saw Alpha's investment to make uh, to really some of that greatness to rub off on me and. Really, like we say, the school for the better making of men. I love how you say so. it rubbed off on you, cause like fuck <laughs> I got, I, was, I said cussing on my own podcast, yeah. but I, I was about to say like, as I said, you are a young man that if I could put my brain in your brain when I was your age, I was not there. Like, <laughs> like yeah, I was so proud of you. Like, yeah. I'm like an old drunk uncle right I now. I appreciate like, that, man. I was like, man, like, dang, that's hey. you saw that, right? I, yeah, I didn't know all that. Like, uh, and I, on the flip side. My parents grew up in fraternity life. Yeah. So I knew about it. My dad's a Q and all that. Oh, I was like, bro. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we all make choices, that right? Was... <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a difficult conversation. No, it wasn't. Actually, it was like, oh. pay for it yourself. That's oh. it. That was it. The I mean, end. the end. I feel you. But I understand the sentiment. No, but, um, <laughs> but like all that, that research and all that. And, then, and I think the same thing. That's what got me involved was like, uh, more like I was a nerdy one. Like I saw no offense, to the, no shade to the cues, uh, all the sports guys and all the people that was like me. So yo, this dude's yeah. brainy. This dude is this right. dude's smart. That was, a, that was the same way. With that's me. me. I was like yo, corn. That was all the people, the brainy people. I was like yo, that's those are my people. Like I, I'm, I'm all about that side. Like the we call it about stereotypes. I'm all about education. I'm all about. Scholarship, yeah, exactly. That was mine. That was, yeah, exactly. That's, that's where I nerded out too. Exactly, and that's kind of like why I joined. I just like you know all the all the D nine fraternities have, have greatness in it, but like yeah, the the greatness that was in Alpha was the type of greatness I wanted to emulate. So that's yeah. why it was good for me, and it was just a bunch of people involved in politics and social justice. So. Um, you know that's 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 kind of why I wanted to do it now. Yeah. And then I said the why now. Yeah, the mine was a different why now. But your why? Why did you think it was something you needed to do in college, and not wait till later in life? Like wait till you graduated. Like why is like yo? I gotta mm-hmm. do this. I gotta do this while I'm at CU. I gotta do this right now. What made you decide to do that? Uh, I thought it was essential to my development as a young man. Okay. Uh, like I I felt in dire need of mentorship. Mm. Like. So I just felt like, again, it was an investment in my manhood. So, like, I just, like, I didn't feel like I could wait. Like, I, I didn't feel like, oh, let's well, do it after. Because I mm-hmm. felt like it was essential to my success right then and there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would yeah, say yeah. that was kind of my why for at the time. And then the last one is why, why be? What, like, what drew you to those brothers on that campus? Yeah, so the uh, Upsilon Beta, the Undisputed Okay, yeah, I'm speed 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 chapter oh, excuse me. of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, we, so, so what was so great about my chapter is like, just like how even as a small chapter, like everybody knew who the Alphas were. Like I, I, I feel I like seeing you. Yeah, like I feel like yeah. with PWIs a lot of times like, mm-hmm. you kind of get lost in the sauce. Mm-hmm. Whereas like a lot of people are like, oh, I've never heard of Alpha, and it's like we made sure that everybody knew who we were on that campus and I think that's powerful in and of itself seeing as we usually had single digit numbers so the fact mm-hmm. that that we were winning awards the fact that people we had the notoriety mm-hmm. despite the numbers and despite mm-hmm. the obstacles in our way uh, that was something that really drew me to the brothers I, I like that kind of perseverance through the obstacles um, and, and that's that's something I really admired in the brothers so yeah I appreciate that now uh, what's your question for me? You got all this time. I know I asked you a bunch of questions. What's your random question for me? Shot oh, for okay. shot. Okay. Uh, what's the only question, man? <sighs> Let me see. So, so I was I was listening I was listening to a so so what are like so what is something you're like taking into the new year mm. that like 
you want to do differently? Because, like, just observing you, I see you doing a lot of, like, a lot of great things. And I and I feel like you're doing so many great things that I'm like, I'm like, wow, like, how does he do it? Like, how does he say, like, dang, I really need to get better at this? And it's like, no. like, I just feel like you're doing such great things. So, like, how do you keep yourself humble and how do you keep yourself, like, <laughs> keep going to the top? Uh, like, you know uh, what I'm saying? All, I'm curious all, about that. First of all. I'm glad you said the word humble because I'm going to release another episode. This episode that we're doing right now is going to come out in the new year, obviously, because I'm going to take a little podcast break. It's going to come out in February. Mm -hmm. But uh, I am actually doing the opposite and saying that in 2020, is no humble season. Hey, come on. No. No. And and let me rephrase. Uh, The reason why there is no humble season in 2020. No humble season? Because a lot of people, I wrote an article about it, is that a lot of people don't know that behind the scenes, I I have this overwhelming pressure to to be good. Um, And and it manifests itself negatively in Mm. what we call imposter syndrome, right? You heard of that? Where like, oh, I I, I get that sometimes. Oh, I don't feel like I belong here. Uh, It's like deer in the headlights. No, everyone, everyone here, everyone here is better than me or uh, I I get a seat at the table, but I don't belong here. Right, Um, right, right. Which I never, and and in 2020, I'm going to sit, I I will say to myself, no humble season as in uh, I will get the fruits of my labor, meaning no humble season means I am, I am confident but not cocky. I am confident I'm not arrogant, and mm-hmm. I am going to put in the hard work that if I get rewards or get accolades, I deserve them. Like I did, I worked hard. So, uh, uh, in your question about like, you know, what my goals for 2020 is, I have a lot of goals, like big ones, small ones. Uh, public speaking, all that. Yeah, and that's what's up. And with those goals being said, is that I am not going to. If a goal gets accomplished, check mark, and it's a big one, and I get I get noticed for it, and someone said, "Philip, I see you doing big things." I'm gonna say, "Thank you so much." Right. I, I earned it. And, and and and, and <laughs> so it's a it's a talk to it's talk. a matter of gratitude. Like yeah. um, thank you, thank you so much for acknowledging my hard work, but I earned it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, because I used to be like, I did all this hard. Work. People would say, "Yo, Philip, you're doing big things." And I'm like, ah, I guess so. Or all right, I, I mean, if you think I am, or uh, you're really good at this. You and I, I, I look for external validation to say someone like you're really good at this, and I'm like, oh, you really think I am? But in 2020, if someone says I'm good at something, be like, I know. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 yeah. Thank and you for noticing. And, and, and it's going to be like that. It's gonna, like the noticing one. It's going to be like, yeah. it's going to be like, uh, I still give appreciation to someone like, right. Philip, you're so good at this. And I'm going to say to them, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, recognizing it. But it's also going to be like, I know I am. Like, you know, like, I thank you so much. And I, I put hard work in for you to acknowledge that I'm good at something. No humble season. I'm not humble about it. No. I am good at this. And I, I whether you acknowledge it or not, I know I'm good at this. And I know what I'm good at. Right. I'm good at helping people. I'm good at connecting with people. I'm good at helping uh, uh, students. I'm good at getting people jobs. I'm good at my job. Uh, what I'm not good at, maybe things I need to work on, writing and all this stuff. But I am good at some. So if someone says... If someone gives me a compliment on something I'm already good at, I'm going to just take it as it is. Like, yep, no humble season. Yes, you're right. I am good at that. Thank you so much for noticing. If you didn't notice, I was good at it anyway. Facts. So, I like that. so that's what I'm going to work I like on. That. So, cool. it, all lesson. all in 2020 is I'm just going to say that to myself. No humble season, meaning I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to devalue things I work hard. So if I get if I get an award, if I get like if I get like uh, uh, congratulations! You were the top person at Mason. Yes, mm-hmm. I I am. <laughs> I earned it. Right. And so that's what I'm gonna work on. I like that. That's because cool. a lot of times I I, uh, I I devalue myself in mm-hmm. regards to things I'm good at, and it's because I I'm I'm, in, I'm more embarrassed about it. But I'm not embarrassed no more because I I work hard and people you notice it. You do. I do shit like this. Thanks. I got the kids, NWCP. Right. Car car. <laughs> but um, 
And I, I think uh, I think what's helped me with that too is that uh, when I joined Alpha or did any of this stuff, a lot of the times I was like, "Yo, what am I doing here?" I told you. I think I even told you that in Vegas one yeah, time. Yeah, I was did. like, I was in Vegas, like, "Yo, all these people was like, like, how am I here? Like, how did I even get in the room?" But now I was like, you know what? Quite honestly, maybe I'm not the uh, the normal brother Wilkerson, but mm-hmm. I'm in the room though, mm-hmm. and no one could deny me helping out people. And I and I would tell someone else, I do just as much work as someone else in fraternity or at my job or this that no one could deny that I help. I've yeah. helped someone. I help, I help someone, and I will continue to help someone. Mm-hmm. So sure. that's it. No humble season. And hold me accountable. Should be a and, 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 that's my new hashtag. Humble season is over is my hashtag. <laughs> it's over. And if you catch I'm me, used, I'm telling I'm people. Using it, it. No, I'm humble season you. is over. And if you catch me being, like, let me rephrase. If you not being humble, it's good to be humble. But if you catch me being, using a lot of negative self-talk, I'm asking all my listeners and I said all my friends to check me. I'm like, yo, I suck today. Accountability. No, I, I want like people. It. I want people to, and, and, and I don't want people to check me to give me a boost. Right. Like if I did suck at something, be honest. Mm-hmm. Like yo, Philip, get better. Yes. But if I did something right and right. I'm still questioning it, I want you to be like, you did good, right? Mm-hmm. Done it. So then we did a we did a really good podcast. I'm gonna cut this in half because then we did a two parter. But the oh, stage. Dope. Yeah, look, no, yeah, I like but, that. But the stage is yours. Okay. So this means this is the last part of the episode called, um, oh, it's called shout outs and plugs, meaning, whatever. Mm-hmm. Shout outs means shout out everyone you want to shout out right. everyone, and and make sure you shout them out. And plugs is anywhere where you you're gonna put in the show notes which you already did. Plugs means anywhere you want the listeners to follow you and get connected with you. So shout out and plugs. Floor is yours. Thank you for that. Um. So uh, I want to give a shout out to my my chapter uh, at uh, YB underscore alphas if anyone wants to follow at work. Um, You know, fraternity has like changed my life and everything. Mm -hmm. So I always want to give a shout out to that. Also want to give a shout out to to somebody uh, um, by the name of Cameron Bertrand. He's a Mm -hmm. a local activist in Newport News. Uh, he, He has an initiative called Buy Back the Block. And uh, another initiative, you know, called Violence Intervention and Prevention. It's his mentorship uh, um, mm-hmm. organization, mm-hmm. provides mentorship to at-risk youth. Um, you know, I, I've worked with him on a, on a couple of things, and, uh, and I always am inspired by his work. He just, um, he just uh, raised about $1,500 to mm-hmm. send a, um, you know, um, a, a kid that his, his mom been really breaking her back to like uh go and uh send send this send the boy to uh to um just like football camps and everything like that so he can follow his dreams and you know the, the, just him being able to provide that money to her mm-hmm. so she you know she wouldn't have to you know just to provide some financial relief um that's something recent that he did was just really inspiring to me um so if you go on Instagram at mind of a billion um, you can go find him and go follow his work. Um, he, he's a really awesome person. Um, so yeah, I, I want to shout him out and in another organization, uh, Black Voters Matter. Um, that that's another organization and uh, and uh, Miss Shanice Williams. Uh, she is uh, she's the kind of coordinator I've been working with down in Newport News. She does phenomenal work as well. Um, you know, and and please look that up on Instagram, Facebook, whatever uh, platforms you use. Black Voters Matter. Um, really, really great organization doing great work. Um, and then... Uh, I plugs, think, plugs, plugs. Okay, yeah, yeah plugs. Yeah, plugs for you. What the plugs? plugs okay. Where the plugs at? So, for you. For, for myself... Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to follow me, uh, it, it's uh, on Instagram. I don't have a Twitter yet, but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get one soon. So don't worry mm-hmm. about that. Uh, that would probably be I probably have one by the time this this show airs. But uh, it you can follow me on Instagram at, mm-hmm. at the the underscore prodigal son twenty three. 
Um, and also, uh, I have an article written about me by mm-hmm. YCR, which is a Greek publication. Just my ideas on like leadership and brotherhood and all those yeah, good sure. things. So uh, that that'll probably be in the notes of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and yep. also, please, everybody who's listening to this, please like go on LinkedIn. You know, add me. Mm-hmm. I'll add you back. Like and, and the uh, and the and the YB Alphas, right? Put yeah, them, we're gonna put them in the yeah, notes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so and also. Um, I would say some some things I'm really focusing on right now, Mm -hmm. as far as my work is, uh, getting people engaged for 2020. Uh, this is a, this is big time right here. Um, uh, just the, the 2020 election is not only the president, but you have pretty much all the congressional seats up Mm. for grabs. So the 2020 is a pivotal year. Um, is it going to decide to, the kind of setting the tone for the direction our country is going to go in entering this like kind of like new decade and I, I think it's really important so I'm really focusing on my get out to vote efforts turning out people to vote getting people educated on what's going on in their communities and stuff like that really working on that um so um yeah so so that's a big thing I, I'm I want to plug myself in and to you guys on, plug, on, plug. on what I'm on what I'm working on so uh you know, I'm not, I'm not sleeping. Don't worry. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so yeah, please like follow me, you know, uh, you know, keep up with me. I uh, definitely want to keep up with, you know, whoever's listening out there and, uh, let's make sure we're doing good work out here. Let's make sure it. we're involved. You know I what I'm saying? It. So, yeah. Now the last part one is, uh, follow this young brother, all the things that we're going to put in the show notes. Uh, this has been a great episode. Uh, I, I think I'm going to def- not think. I'm going to have you definitely back on the podcast. Maybe do a Q&A episode, whatever. Um, what are things that I w- would like to keep everyone uh, abreast to is that for this whole episode, we did a lot of different topics. The things that we I really want you to get in t- tune with is learn your lo- local politics, learn how to get politically involved in your area, get involved, read, do facts, and then also uh, just ask questions because there's nothing wrong with asking questions about someone that knows about um, the political area that you don't know about. Like, you know, uh, what I've learned a lot is I've learned from young people such as Quentin. I learned from young people that such as Dominique and Shelby. And for me to humble myself and learn from them took no effort. Just ask questions. I learned. So, if you have any questions for the podcast, you can either leave a message at positivefilter.com or at Positive Filter on every social media avenue, or call the hotline at 571 336 6560. That's 571 336 6560. All the questions, all those things, we'll do a QA episode, get you abreast. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Thank you, Quentin, for being on this episode. Yes, sir. Follow all him on everything, and we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career, with a little self-help along the way. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your family and friends, and like the Facebook page, Spreading Positivity of Movement. Thanks for listening.